All right, lesson 4-4, four, four, graphing sine and cosine functions. Let's talk about some properties first before we look at graphing these. Uh, the domain, that means this goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. That means left to right, there's no breaks. The same is true for cosine as is for sine, as well as the range. As you actually look through these, you'll see that most of these values are exactly, uh, are a lot alike. Um, this just means it has the lowest value of negative 1, the highest value of 1. And the brackets means it actually hits those points. The same is true. So let me just show you a picture how closely these are related. So I have here a little bit of a graph. Let me, whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, let me shift this where you can see it better. Now, let's say the blue is sine. All right, let me move this over so we can see it. If the blue is sine, sine function looks like this. It'll go through the origin, and that's what it's saying there. It has an origin symmetry. That means the y-intercept is also at zero. Cosine, the shape of the graph is exactly the same. Notice how these are exactly the same. Uh, its shape is exactly the same. The only thing different is it's been shifted over. So it actually hits at its peak. And so the y-intercept on this one would be 1. It would hit at the value 1. Now, it doesn't matter which way you'd shift it. It would still be the same idea. But that's the only difference in these two graphs is that cosine has been shifted over to where it hits up at the top peak, or extrema is another name we could use for that. And as you can see, as you look at these two graphs, the extrema occur in different places. This one, uh, the signs, has extrema here, 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 and here. Whereas cosines, it shows it right there in the y-axis down here. And so they occur at different places. Just to point out, <clears throat> this spot right here is pi over 2. This spot here would be 0. Um, <clears throat> this spot right there should be negative pi over 2. And so you can see how this is counting. This spot here should be pi, and so on and so forth. Uh, that's how this graph would look. Now let's take some look at uh, some other vocabulary. Amplitude. Amplitude is talking about the height of the wave to the very to the middle point. So amplitude could be measured from the center up or from the center down because a wave it had the same height as it would its depth. Uh, where you can find amplitude. Um, is this A value out here in the front. A is your amplitude. And this is just saying the absolute value because if it's a negative number, it just means it goes down first, the wave before it goes up, but it still would measure the same distance. So that's a key word there. So now let's say we're looking at a problem. It says describe how the graphs of f of x equals sine x and g of x equals 2.5 sine x are related. So it's basically asking a transformation problem. The only thing different is this right here. And that is in the place of A. That means this has an amplitude of 2.5. Now, what does that mean? That means from the middle point, this will go up 2.5 units. It will go down 2.5 units. And so let me show you the picture. Notice how these, wa these waves are very similar. They both have uh, the same high point because they're both sine. Sine graphs would look the same. It's just the difference is... This goes up and has a height right here. That point would be 2.5. And its lowest point down here would be negative 2.5. Whereas a normal sign, it's kind of like it has a value of 1 there. That means its peak is at the value 1. And its lowest point would be at negative 1. <clears throat> so that's the difference between these two. Uh, it says sketch two periods. What that means is two complete cycles. All right, if you remember from the la from 4-3, uh, a period in anatomy would be like, well, how long does it take for one full cycle to occur? It's the same concept here. It's like, how long does it take for a full cycle to occur? So if I start, on, I'm looking at the blue here, and we'll say starting from the x-axis going down, we, have, we go down, then up, and then right here we hit again. That would be one cycle, and that would be a second cycle, and this would be starting the third cycle. If we went from the green, let's say we went from the origin this time. It goes up, down, and then back up. There's one complete cycle. There's a second complete cycle, and I didn't even include that. So, yeah, they actually graph more than two complete cycles here. So now you can tell me what is the difference between these two or how would they be related. <clears throat> 